Hello everybody. So in this video, I'm just going to show you how to create a soft, dreamy image. It's, it's kind of a style that you see from specific photographers and I know just from history that so many people are confused and curious how to do it, so I thought I would attempt it. I don't normally do it, but I thought I would give it a go. So this is um, straight out of Adobe Camera Raw. It's been tweaked already, but I'm just gonna go ahead and flatten this. And um, I was gonna straighten it, but you can see that the chair is actually pretty straight. So if you hit your crop tool and you just turn it, I guess that's better right about there. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just blend that backdrop into the floor drop. Go ahead and flatten, duplicate my layer, grab my mixer brush, and I'm just going to little swirls. And if you need to learn more about the mixer brush, you can head over to my Teachable School where I have a full beginner's course on how to use the mixer brush. And the mixer brush is definitely a nice little tool in your tool chest, so you really should learn how to use it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect because uh, the background is pretty blurry or soft. So you just need to kind of blend it. So by doing this, it just kind of makes it look like it's all one cohesive piece instead of two, okay? So that's good. Go ahead and flatten, just like that. And so the whole idea of these images, from what I can tell, is to reduce, get rid of as much shadow in the skin as you can. So you can see here that the majority of the tone is sort of to the left of the midtones. So we're just going to add tiny little points, just incremental ones to kind of counteract those shadows. And we're just trying to minimize the shadows in the face really more than anything. So I'm just going to go back to it and hit command I and invert it, grab a soft brush and make sure it's a soft one. And you can see that my flow is at about 45% and all I'm going to do is come in here and apply this to the more shadowy portions of her little face. Now, you guys know my work, you know that I'm all for contrast and shadows and depth and highlights. So this is counterintuitive to what I typically do. And once you do that, if you still feel like not enough has really been affected, I'm just gonna do a little bit on her arm. Then what you can do is come back into your curves and you can just kind of tweak them a bit and try and increase that a bit. You got to be careful. You don't want to do too much, but I'd say that's fairly good. I can use my dodge and burn in um, the areas and as well as frequency separation to, to get some of those deeper shadows gone. Okay, so kind of like that. Go ahead and flatten. And then first thing we're gonna do is just duplicate our layer and go into our frequency separation. And you can find that in my retouch set. And because I work in 16-bit images, I always choose the 16-bit one. Click play. I just go ahead and accept the Gaussian blur that's defaulted and hit my low layer, go back to my mixer brush. Now we're gonna zoom in. And when you're doing this, I don't necessarily recommend that you zoom in too tight 
And the reason for that is because then you don't really get a good indication of what it is that you're affecting. But for the tutorial, so you can see closer, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I feel like my Photoshop is really laggy this morning. So little circles. We're just trying to pull that lighter color onto the darker shadows of her little nose. So now normally I would really maintain all of the shadows and the highlights, but we're trying something new. So it just depends on how, how heavy handed you want to get with this. If you want super, super smooth, soft skin, I like softening up the hair a little bit, especially when there's stragglies it just kind of blends it all in and that's what I love about using the mixer brush is it can soften everything and give it kind of a soft feeling it's a really great tool on wrinkles so when you zoom out sorry guys if my voice is yucky we've had all the COVID come ram, ramming through our family lately. And I now have a sinus infection. I don't know if it's COVID or not. Thought I had COVID for about a week and a half, about a week ago, but I took a rapid test and it was negative, but I had all the symptoms, so who knows? Who knows? And now my daughter has it, my granddaughter has it, my husband has it. It's a crazy thing. But thankfully, everybody here is vaccinated, except for my granddaughter. She's only 18 months old, so we're a little worried about her, but so far she's okay. Crazy world, right? So just little circles, right about there, a little bit here. And just soften the hair. So if you zoom out, now you can take a look, close your whole frequency group before and after, and you can decide how much of this you want applied to the image. Now, just reduce the whole group to bring back a little bit of detail. I usually reduce it to about 65. I find that that's plenty and that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and flatten. There's still all the shadows on her face. So let's give it a go with dodging and burning and see if we can't get rid of the majority of that. I'm gonna use a flow of two because I don't want it to be super heavy handed. We're just going to come in and lighten those shadows a little bit more. Because we're trying to get rid of all of the contrast.
I guess it's easier if you start with a flatly lit image, but I never do anything the easy way, do I? I think that's probably as realistic as we can get without making it look weird. But you can see this eye needs some light in it especially when you compare it to the other one. So we'll have to come in with a um, overlay blend mode just to lighten those eyes up. So these little tiny shadows, if you just make your brush really small, you should be able to come in and just paint them away. So yeah, I'm going to just come in with a overlay blend mode and see if I can't get that eye looking similar to the other one before and after. Zoom out a little bit so you can see that before and after. So that's not bad, but we need overlay. And now I'm gonna zoom right in and I'm going to sample this color, which looks kind of like a gray, but I'm gonna go a little lighter and increase my flow and just see how I can affect it. Sometimes it doesn't show, so you gotta come in. Look how yellow that eye is compared to that one. That's crazy. that's her real eyes so I'm not gonna try and change the color of it and we're just gonna reduce that a bit because it looks a little bit much we may have to do we may have to go into our selective color we're gonna zoom back into that eyeball we're in the blacks and we're just gonna minimize that matte so we're just gonna pull this up until it's less contrasty Try and add a little bit of blue, and now we'll invert that mask. So Command or Control I to invert, and now we can paint that effect simply on this eye. And that should just soften the contrast and make it look a little more cohesive. I know it's entirely different than the other eye, but that's okay. Okay, go ahead and flatten. Duplicate your layer. I'm just going to come in with my spot healing brush and just paint away some of these little hairs. And if you look right into this eye, you can see this one. So I like to just do it in one fell swoop because I find that normally it looks a little bit more natural if you do it that way. But just play with it because it affects everything differently. And that looks looks decent go ahead and flatten and now we have to like play with her skin tone because it's pretty pink so we're gonna come into our color balance and add in a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red let's come to our highlights and add a little bit of yellow in as well so I'm looking at this arm and it's really really pink compared to the rest I'm just going to invert this mask and at 100% flow I'm just going to paint that color onto her face and neck. We're just trying to warm it up a little bit and now this arm here because it is so red we're going to go to our hue saturation go down to our reds 
and add in a little bit of green. So if you turn it to the right, it adds in green. I'm looking at about a uh, plus six on this one. I'm gonna reduce the saturation by 2%, invert that one, Command or Control I, and then just paint that on her arm and her other hand. I just really want to minimize that pink in her skin. We don't want it to be too entirely red. Okay, go ahead and flatten. Okay, duplicate your layer. We're gonna come into our levels and we're just gonna soften the image by pulling down here to the right so that adds some softness to it. And then for color toning, we're just gonna choose. So if we pull this one, we're adding in some red, which looks pretty nice. And let's go to our blue and add in a little bit of blue, like right about there, before and after. So now I would try my selective color and come in and our blacks I would probably try blue and deepen them down just a little bit because what we're doing now is we're only looking at our subject. We're not looking at the environment. So we want to bring a little bit of the contrast back. We're going to go to our neutrals, add a little bit of yellow to her, tiny bit of red. And again, we're going to bring back just a tiny bit of contrast. And go to our whites. Again, I think I'm going to go yellow. Right about there. Invert that mask. And now we can paint that onto our subject. So essentially this brings back a little bit more contrast without really creating shadows and highlights too terribly. Something like that. Let's feather that mask out, like about there. And because I would like to use the same mask, I'm gonna come into my exposure. And now we're gonna play with our offset. So I'm gonna add more softness to the background. I think that's about good. So that's the offset. And I'm gonna delete this mask and I'm just going to drag this one above so that it see how it's applied it only to her so I'm going to invert that mask and now it's just on the background but what I want to do is I want to reduce my flow to about 50 and just make sure that it kind of blends on the edges of her like so Like about that. We're going to go ahead and flatten. Duplicate our layer. We're going to go to linear light, filter, other, high pass. So now we're going to sharpen her little face so that she actually pops out a little bit more than she is right now. That's probably too much. 3.1 is fine. So 
So that's before and after. We're going to add a mask. We're going to zoom in. And now we're going to apply that sharpening to her eyes, her little mouth, and to her hair. And that usually helps make her pop. Before and after. Now we're just going to go to our cherry cheeks and lips action and paint back a little bit of color. So this color by default is a little too red for this little baby face. So what I like to do is I typically will paint it on and then adjust the color to suit. So I'm going to come into my curves adjustment, go to red and just pull the red down like so. So if you zoom out a bit, you can see what you're dealing with. And if you go to the blue and then pull up the blues, then you get more pink, which is definitely better for this image. So I'll do the same with the cheeks now. So basically the cherry would be here, like so. We're gonna come in and do the same thing. So reduce the reds and bring up the pink, like so. Now click on your mask, go to your properties and feather that out more and then reduce your opacity. So if you look, that's the result. So that's pretty much what I expected it to look like. I don't know what that orange spot is. I'll have to fix it. Maybe I did that earlier. Um, but now what I'm going to do is just duplicate this and come into my Adobe Camera Raw filter because I do want to bring her out of this just a little bit more because to me it just looks not sharp enough. So I'm going to go to my clarity and see if we can't make her a little bit sharper. If I go to my detail, I can sharpen it up just a bit more as well. So right about there. And then what you can do is go to your mask, select your subject. Click on these three dots, invert it. And now we can even make that backdrop, back, background a little bit softer, reduce our contrast a bit. Click OK. So that's before and that's after. Let's just zoom into her little face and make sure that it's not too sharp. Before and after. So I think it looks good. So that's a pretty quick and easy softening. You can reduce that down just a bit. Okay, I think, I think that's pretty good. Let's just perhaps add a bit of a curves adjustment to this now. Um, let's try blue first and then pull the side up which will add a little bit of 
more yellow to the image, which sometimes looks pretty. That looks good. Um, let's go to our red, and we're going to add a point here, and then pull this up. No, pull it down a little bit. So you can see I'm moving it this way. So there's these two. I'm just moving it to the right a little bit, and that's just adding another little bit of softness to it. And in our regular RGB level, we could do the same and just add a wee bit more. So that's before and that's after. So it's added that color toning, not only to her, but to the entire image, which is really, really cute. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a few things and any comments below what you would like to see next or what you think I could have done differently. Feel free to comment below and I'll see you in the next video.